Welcome to the Flyers Nitty Gritty Podcast, getting gritty with it, with your hosts, Sharif Wallach and Jamie Baskow. Jamie, what's going on, buddy? And our... With it, my friend. Honey, 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 come ride DKNY all up in your eye. Who got a strata? Just can't sit. Getting gritty with it. That's it. All right. I love it. I love it. Chris. Chris is our guest today from our team. One of our, I, I would say team, but also, um, you know, collaborator of some sort, you know, video collaborator. Chris does his own thing. Chris Marr, I believe. Marr is how you say it? It's Mayor, Correct. but... Mayor, sorry. 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 I, sorry. I'm sorry. horrible with names. <laughs> Apologies, but now I know. So Chris Mayer, um, follow him, listen to him, welcome yourself here. Share yourself off to our audience for a little bit. Thanks, guys. What's up? Uh, again, thank you thank you for uh, letting me come on. Uh, I'm here to have a blast with you guys. Um, two of people I look up to, two guys that have brought me on and really shown me some stuff and uh, definitely helped me. Um, but, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Yeah, awesome. Happy to have you. And nobody can doubt your authenticity. I mean, all you have to do is look at the room behind him, even though it's blurred, <laughs> and the hat on his head. Uh, authenticity all the way. <laughs> I love that Phantoms hat, man. I, I got to tell you, man, I love it. Thanks, I love Jamie. It. I appreciate it. Talk today. There's going to be a lot of Phantoms talk. And yeah. this is John Mayer's brother. Just so you all know. John Mayer, the <laughs> all music. Right. All right. <laughs> that is a rumor. I am down to spread. All right. <laughs> and we're about to yeah. yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. So... We got a lot to talk about. Uh, obviously, we have a very strange season, um, if we still have a season. I mean, officially, the season has not been canceled. Uh, we've had some more cases pop up of coronavirus. <clears throat> We're still underneath the the beautiful guise of the coronavirus. Yes, perfectly ruining everybody's lives. Um, but fortunately, we still have a lot to talk about, even though the season is in hiatus. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. Most likely we're going to hear a cancellation at some point. We still want to be hopeful. I think we all want to assume that the season is still coming back until we hear otherwise. But, you know, I think we're all a little bit worried at this point as far as not just hockey but everything else in life, right? But we do have a lot to talk about. So I think one of the biggest things we want to talk about is something we are all really excited about. And I think we'll go in order here. Um, we had two really big signings for the Flyers. These guys might be a little bit under the radar to the average Flyers fan, um, maybe even a little bit forgotten, right? They were in the NCAA. They are kind of top of their class, but maybe had some injuries of late in Allison. Um, and Lashinsky, you know, he puts up really good numbers, plays a huge role, but he's not, you know, the, the type of guy who's going to come into the, the league and just blow the doors off, right? So it's not a Morgan Frost. It's not the sexier names, but they're also guys who can be really good NHL players. You know, it's, these are big signings. So with Lashinsky being that first signing, a guy we were really worried about. You know, I'll, I'll, open, I'll open up to you first, Jamie. Jamie, what do you think about the Lashinsky signing? Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, it just showed the uh, death. Uh, Six-round draft pick, you know, and uh, it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter where you get drafted as long as you get drafted. And it, it same could go for Wild Colnock, too, who was drafted in the seventh round. And that was a classic Ron Hextall pick was Tanner Lazinski in the sixth round. And you look at Oscar Lindblom in the fifth round. So where I'm getting at is as long as you get drafted in the NHL, you have a shot. And these, you know, if people were lo- watching the Philadelphia Flyers farm system to include Tanner Lazinski, uh, Oscar Lindblom, Wyatt Kalnick, you know, uh, even Roddy Ross selected, you know, with Chuck Fletcher, you know, in the seventh round. So you're looking and Bryce Broad. Zinsky, what in the in the sixth round? You know, you're looking at all these guys being selected, all these prospects, and it's like all you gotta do is get drafted. So that's where the hard work comes in. Tanner put in four years of hard work at Ohio State, kicked it, kicked butt down there, rocked it in injury riddled seasons. You look, he had two injuries last year. He told me he was, you know, a little frustrated how his season ended. And what he was a three time Hobie Baker Award nominee. That was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, his sophomore season was his best year. Last year, he was hurt and still put together a Hobie Baker Award nominee season. This year, he, he was hurt once and still put to be, put together another Hobie Baker Award nominee. You know, nominee. He was had thirty four points in thirty six games this year. Uh, the the guy is just what I like most about Tanner is that he's gotten more physical as his year has gone on. 
uh, as each year progressed, he was getting a little more physical, a little more physical, a little more physical. And the un, it, 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 uh, an un, what most Flyer fans don't know of Tanner is that he could board battle. And, and that's, that, that could help the Flyers in the future. And personally, with the way Chuck Fletcher talked about him today, and uh, Wade Allison, for that matter, saying that these guys would compete, both of these prospects would compete for jobs you know, next season, I, I see it, and I see Tanner being a fourth-line center possibility next year. You know, possibly, possibly. Maybe not the star. I think he's going to the phantom, but that's my personal opinion. But if he does play, I can see him being a fourth-line center. So I love this signing. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Chris, what, what do you think about him? Uh, I mean, like, to be honest, I, I think I, I I like both signings, him and Allison. Um, and you know, I know, Yuriv, when I did the video with you talking about uh, – Lizinski, you know, it was basically like me and you were like, all right, they got one. Now they got to get Allison. Um, and eventually, a couple days later, they did. But as for Lizinski, I like him. Um, to be honest, he kind of reminds me of Scott Lawton. Uh, he's got that, as Jamie, as you said, he has that physical game to him. Um, I think he's a very good depth player. Jamie, like you said, he's got a really hard shot, too, which is one thing that, you know, they, they've they been raving about uh, lately. I've been seeing that a lot since they signed him. There's been talk about his shot and, you know, how his game is. Um, but I... Again, um, if anything, you know, like me, me, Yuri, we talked about this off camera, how we think that he, either he gets top line minutes in the AHL or bottom line minutes with the Flyers. Jamie, like you said, fourth line center. If anything, he could be first line, maybe second line uh, wing or, or center uh, with the Lehigh Valley. I, I, I love him. I think he's a very good player. Um, and I think he's one of them guys um, that can definitely definitely make some noise uh, if they were to have um, dev camp and you know, training camp, uh, obviously the whole coronavirus thing. Uh, if that stuff is on time, um, hopefully he'll be able to get in there and show his skills off uh, pretty well. Yeah, that would be awesome if we can have a dev camp. That's. I think you guys are absolutely spot on with him. You know, I think between the two of you, you kind of told the whole story of him already. And it's it's interesting how he's been brewing for so long. And I, obviously I'll talk about Allison, but Lashinsky, for real, like he's a guy that a few months ago we were all – I wouldn't say convinced, but we are all we all speculated that we could lose him for nothing, that he could walk. He could be our Kevin Hayes story of a really good player who walked, who could be a potential 40, 50-point player in the league, who could score 20 goals in the NHL. And you look at his production. I mean, like we, we talked about it a little bit when, J- Jamie, you were going over it, um, but really— Every year, he's been a point-per-game player in the NCAA. Even at a young age of, what, 19, 18 years old? To do that is severely impressive, and only to have his role increased and to do that through injuries while the play, what he has some uh, juniors times, right, in the under-20 tournament. So he's had success at a high level, playing a high role. He could be Scott Lawton, but maybe he's a little bit better. I mean, I love Scott Lawton. I do. But Scott Lawton has difficulty scoring. Now, he did a little bit of that this year and i'm really excited about that but he had p- trouble with power a lot of times on his shot missing the net missing opportunities could lashinsky come in i mean he's a lot more seasoned he's not rushed like lawton came in lawton was really rushed in the nhl he was playing in the nhl what 18 19 years old it's too early for him mm-hmm. um really lashinsky <clears throat> has an opportunity to maybe come in and be a 40-point player like pretty early. So maybe third line or maybe fourth line, Jamie, but it could be fourth line and third line, you know, maybe shifting to the wing at some point, right? Obviously, Patrick is still up in the air, but it does become a very valuable player to the team. Yeah, I I just like uh, prospects in their natural position when they first start, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in NHL, in in my opinion. That's what I – and that's why I love about the Flyers keeping Morgan Frost at center. Even though now looking at it, if Pat, when Patrick comes back, and I say when because Chuck Fletcher gave some really good updates on Nolan Patrick today in terms of him progressing well and, you know, things are trending in the right direction, quote unquote. So to me, that that means that with that, that that's pretty high marks. You know, if the season reconvenes, he has a high probability of, you know, starting. But definitely, let's just say next season for sure. Uh, when you're looking at it, Noel Patrick will slide into the third, you know, third line center, maybe even second line center, depending, right, you know, yeah. and and, and th- depending on how he recuperates and, and different things and shows his skill. So when you're looking at it, that's why I love the Flyers keeping Morgan Frost at center because it shows, that, you know, they want him to play his natural position at least to start, get comfortable in the NHL, get his feet wet, 
and then maybe move, slide him to the wing. And I think the same thing goes for Tanner Lezinski, uh in terms of him being, you know, a center, you really? know, because Wade Allison can play left wing too. A lot of people, he's very versatile. He can play either wing. He put in, and I think they want to try to keep him on the right wing, obviously. You know, sure. so I, I'm a firm believer in keeping these young prospects in their natural positions. Yeah, you no. know, at least I would agree with that. Ja- so. Jamie, I would, I would totally agree with that, right? Because especially if you can develop a center, I think that's crucial, right? If you even can convert a winger to a center, yeah. you're going to yeah. do it, right? And, and I think that's key there, right, with the Morgan Frost thing. And I do remember yeah. talking to people about this, and we've talked about it. If you can develop a center, always develop a center first, right? Yeah. Start by developing the center because – those players are always more valuable. They're more valuable in trades, even if you have to move the player. If you can play down the middle, that makes you more valuable in the opposition. It means you're a better winger because it means you're probably better defensively. So developing a center is fantastic. And usually only really good, strong wingers defensively can convert. And that's what's neat about the CHL because the CHL is definitely <laughs> that mode where you know they they they're very versatile. They play center yeah. wing, center wing, center wing. Mm-hmm. That's one. Good, that's really one good thing I love about the CHL. Sorry to take up your time, Chris. Oh, no, it's uh, all right. Um, you, you know, like, and 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 it's funny because like as you guys bring up, you know, the whole center wing thing and guys like changing positions. The one thing that I always notice that the one one player on the Flyers that it reminds me he's a center that plays wing is Joel Farabee. He's one of them guys yes. that has like a very good hockey IQ that he's just. Insanely good defensively at a winger position, which is a position that you're not. It's not necessarily known for its defense. It's kind of just they hang low in the zone, and that's really about it. I mean, like there isn't much to it. Um, but Jamie, I definitely do agree. Keeping guys in their natural pres- nat- uh, natural positions, I think that's. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, it's more beneficial, but I think it. it I think it definitely helps. Not, not even just their game, like, you know, their game itself, but their game mentally, because then they don't have to go into it like, all right, well, now, do I, how do I, like, how do, do I have to do stuff differently because I'm on the wing, this and that, and then they, maybe they overthink, you know, you never know, it happens. Um, but again, I, 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 I definitely do agree with that, that you should definitely keep guys at their natural positions. Um, I, 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 as you said, I feel like that's beneficial for them. And hopefully, uh, you know, if the Flyers can do that with Lazinski, Frost, uh, and continue to do that, then that'll help them put more points up on the scoreboard as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think those are great points. And, and I, and I think it's going to be reflected in the way that they develop these players. We're going to see, we're probably mm-hmm. going to see that moving forward. And I think some people, you know, had the expectation that Frost would get tried at wing at the NHL. We did not see that. Even on a line with Claude Giroux, he still played the middle, right? And that yeah. is important. They really want to make sure that you develop that center position because by far, at least on forward, you know, the by far the most difficult position to play. And it's interesting you said Joel Farabee, right? Because Joel Farabee, I did talk about this as well, and we've talked about this, Jamie, is that I thought he's a player that if you could convert any of our players, he would be the type of guy because he is responsible enough defensively that you can make him a center. And he has fantastic hands, so he could eventually learn the face-off dot and whatnot. But he's also kind of slight, so why move him into the middle, right? There's also that argument. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think you would, but, you know, it's just you look for those type of players. But the reason he's so successful is because he reminds me of kind of a modern day Simone Gagne without the speed. Gagne was kind of a speed burst, but the reason Gagne was able to make the NHL at 18, 19 years old is because he was very good defensively, especially for a very slight player. He played the PK, played the power play, played all situations. He's never a centerman, obviously, but always an elite two way player. And while he put up 40 points, he still played the PK or 40 goals. He still played the penalty kill. And that is very impressive. And that's why we love guys like Claude Giroux. These are high-impact players. And that's why a guy like Joel Farabee is such a big impact. Because maybe he won't be, you know, he might not be Claude Giroux. He might not be even as good as, maybe Frost will have a better pr- production throughout his career. But he might be that extra edge type of player that, um, you know, that TJ Oshie guy. Who everybody's like, TJ Oshie's amazing. You know you would love to have him on your team. He mm-hmm. might not put up more points than everybody else. But without a doubt, the guy could be an X, X factor. And Tom Wilson, I'll I'll throw him. He can be an X factor as well for different reasons. But again, unique unique abilities, right? For sure. Yeah, but Tom Wilson is one of those players that every team hates, but they would love to have. I was just gonna say that. I yeah. was just you took the words right out of my mouth. Yes. 
And it was he, funny because I saw something on Facebook earlier that was like, "Who's one player that you that that you hate playing against the Flyers, but you'd love on the Flyers?" And I commented, "Tom Wilson." One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Why would you not? Freaking hit! You yeah. fight. I mean, what more? He's a flyer. You know, for, and for he can real, score. That's the thing. He can score too. Yeah. Well, we listen. We had Wayne Simmons. We did have Wayne Simmons. He he wasn't uh, as I don't want to say he wasn't as tough as Tom Wilson because he definitely was. But he had a different way of playing. But he also was an elite goal scorer. Comes yeah. and goes, man. Comes and goes. Let's not forget about Allison, though. We did. We talked. We talked about Lashinsky. Let's not talk. Let's not forget about go. Allison because <clears throat> Allison, Allison might actually end up being the better player. And it really because of injuries. I think he's been under the radar. And if without injuries, I think he would have been in the public eye. Quite frankly, I think he would have been a goal scorer. This team is dying for a goal scorer, a guy who at least. Could be a 35, maybe 40 goal scorer on this team. This team would love a young prospect like that. And I don't know if Allison is that guy. Injuries have set him back. But at one point, he was projected to be potentially a 30 goal scorer in the NHL. You know, it's asking a lot of a guy who's had, again, severe injuries, but also rebounded from those injuries. So a high end player at a really good age probably will start in the Phantoms. But, you know, I see a really high upside from him. Chris. What do, you, what do you think about Allison? I love Allison. I mean, like, Allison is one of those guys where it's just like, like, I mean, just like you said, he's able to rebound from things like that. And it looks like he's able to, he, he takes, like, any negativity that comes near him, it just, he, he just fades away from it and he plays better. Um, he, he, like, he's one of them guys where I feel like he's, you know, he, like, he could be a guy that could definitely play top minutes with Lehigh Valley and I think maybe even first line. Um, I, I would love to see him with Morgan Frost on the same line, see what they could do with that. Um, I feel like he's, you know, he, he's one of them guys that he's kind of another one that's just like, you know, injuries and stuff has kind of thrown him under. But I, I feel like he's one of those kind of like underrated guys that since all the injuries and stuff, he can come back and, and definitely make some noise for himself. Totally. Jamie, right? Oh, absolutely. So to echo what Chris said, because he, he did it so well, uh, all Allison has to do is stay healthy. I'm very confident in his play. I'm very confident in him as a player. He's uh, definitely on the verge of being NHL ready. I think Lazinski is just a shad, you know, uh, more NHL ready than Allison, just because solely because of injuries, in my opinion. It has nothing. I think they're both the same prototype players, so to speak. Just Allison provides a little more net front presence, in my opinion. They both bore battle, uh, you know, very well. They're both physical players. And they both can shoot. And the the neat thing about both players is that they both have very good uh, vision of the ice. And that is one thing about Wade Allison that's underrated about his game is that he is an effective passer. And I saw, you know, a few times this past year when they were broadcasting the uh, Western Michigan uh, Bronco, University Broncos games on CBS and whatnot and watching Wade Allison throw crisp tape-to-tape passes. And I'm like, wow. I, I didn't even know that that was part of his game. And I've been watching him, you know, for the past three years. And I just think his passing just got better this year, you know, as the season went on anyway, you know, after him coming back from that month and a half of injury. And that that's just the thing about Allison. He just needs to stay healthy, needs to stay focused. And like like Chris said, I think he can play for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. And he could potentially, you know, potentially, if, if need be, he could definitely, you know, if necessary. And let's think about it. Right wing position could be of some weakness here in the future for the Bulls. And Wade Allison knocks, check, check, you know, hits on all boxes, in my opinion, anyway. So, yeah, I think, it, you know, I love the signing. I think Chuck did great. You know, kudos to having faith in himself. What he could have done was split one of them for like a Cooper Marotti, you know, like Hextall did. A six round draft pick, Cooper Marotti. You know, for, he went to the you know University of Michigan, flipped him for a third round pick to you know to Edmonton. You remember that? <clears throat> so you know, Blackford could have done one of that even at the trade deadline. You would have had some takers. I guarantee the Devils would have came calling. You know, for for one of these prospects. Yeah, but that's right. the thing though. Like, if there's any way they tr- they trade him to a division rival in New Jersey yeah, or New York? True. Yeah. That's true. I, but if they're giving a third round pick for a sixth rounder, I'm talking. I'm I'm not trading. Not neither one of these guys. I would move for Cooper Marudi. Yeah, I would have because from my understanding about Cooper Marudi's game, it's not that uh, he doesn't have the ability to make the NHL. It's that he doesn't have a two-way game, and he's not committed to that two-way game. 
I remember one thing in particular about Cooper Maruti, and I'll never forget it, and I and I believe that this is why Ron Hextall got rid of him, is he actually lost an entire season of hockey because of his grades. Oh, school. yeah. Yes. And yeah. and my and I'm not saying I judge him. I, I was a terrible student. I in no <laughs> way judge him for, for school. I am not a school person, but all I'm saying is I, I don't think see, anyone is. Right. Well, especially like I, you know, you you don't want to be a high end athlete and also be a, a scholar. It's right. You know, a lot to ask, but you know, it's an attention to detail that I think most people don't realize that it's held upon these athletes. Something I, I think most people don't realize, and I stand by this statement. I'm sure somebody will try to correct me. I would say that majority of NHL athletes did at least reasonably well in school to very good in school, and I and I think it's also. It's not so much because school is that hard because it's really not. And I think that's what Ron Hextall's point is, is school is not that hard. You have to just listen to what they tell you to do. And that tells me a little bit about his character. And I had problem listening to people tell me what to do. I still do. And I can tell you that a guy who's trying to build an organization to win a championship might not be that interested in that. Having said that, I do believe everybody deserves second chances. We've seen Pat Maroon you know, get, get traded and then win cups. It does yeah. not mean it defines the rest of his career, but I'm just saying that's what makes yeah, them I, I, available. I that available. That's yeah. all I'm saying, and I'm not saying yeah. it's his fault, and I'm not saying he won't be a great player. I have no idea. Um, I'm just saying that's you know a little hunch on so my the part. Year he got traded the year after Hextall, Hextall flipped him. Uh, he was the best. I, I think he had the most points in the AHL. Yeah, I think if I oh, wasn't he did phenomenal. He did phenomenal, uh, and then he regressed this year. I noticed. But, yeah, I didn't even pay attention nope. this year, to be honest. He's probably an NHL player. He's probably an NHL player. But all I'm saying is is that I believe that maybe that had something to do with it. Yeah. Most likely it's because they got a third-round pick on top of that. But I don't think they valued him in the same way they value Allison. No. no the, to your point, the, the, you know. The good thing is, is that Wade Allison told us at developmental camp that the ball was in the Flyers' court this past season. So that's what assured me – that he was more than likely going to sign. And then with uh, Tanner Lezinski telling us, you know, last year when we interviewed him, that, uh, you know, he was going back solely for unfinished business because he was pissed off of being hurt. You know, those two injuries really, he was pissed off at that. So yeah. he wanted people that he could stay healthy and have another good year. And he did that. I mean, well, you, you know, he did get hurt. But um, Well, the thing is, though, is – we, the thing is about Wade Allison though is he might actually now injuries aside, you know, assuming that he's healthy, right, 100 percent healthy. We don't even know if there's going to be a delay on the season or whatever the hell is going to happen. But assuming that he's ready to go, I mean theoretically he should have an easier path to the NHL than Lashinsky. He doesn't have to play center, and the Flyers really need goal scoring on the wing, right? Not really, really, but they could use it. They could it, use right? it, right? Right. Yeah, they could use it and. They're both of age, right? So you look at a guy like NAK, right? So NAK is in the NHL, right? He's an age group right above Allison. So if you really look at it, Allison, that could be his window. Potentially next year, without the injury, I'm telling you, he would be in the NHL next year. From what I saw of him play. And even when he wasn't playing fully, he was at like, what, 50% at dev camp? He still looked like by far one of the best players there. And he barely played when he got back to college. I remember that. I think he didn't even play for long portions of time. So he wasn't even healthy, and he still looked better than other prospects. I really am interested to see how good this kid really is because he could be one of those guys who maybe puts up, I don't know, 15 goals his first year in the NHL. We haven't had a guy like that, you know, really since TK uh, or Patrick, you know, a guy who can come in and really score. I mean, Faraby had some of that, but a guy who can really just – I think Faraby will probably be a better goal scorer but again, we got to uh, account for age here, right? Faraby is a kid where Allison is a little bit older. Can he come in and contribute immediately? You know, that I'd be really interested. Then, you know, I know you really like Pitlick, Chris, and I really I, like Pitlick. I, I think love Pitlick. We, we all do, honestly. And I think he earned a contract. Mm -hmm. But I think he'll get one, to be honest with you. Allison is the insurance behind that. But, you know, I could see Allison coming in and taking that spot from Pitlick mm -hmm. not too far from now. You know, maybe yeah, a year. Right. Maybe a year, right? Yeah, I'm, and, and it's funny because I was actually talking about this with Jamie. Uh, I believe it was yeah, yesterday morning. Um, and he was, you know, we, we were saying, like, it's it's either going to be Pitlick or possibly Justin Braun because probably both of them are going to want to pay raise. Um, and that was actually a good point that Jamie brought up, too, because I, I didn't even think of that. 
to be honest, like giving them a pay raise because Braun. how good they've been playing. Yeah, Braun. I mean, Braun's probably one of the more solid defensive right hand right handed defensemen in the league, and he's probably and his contract's three point eight now. He'll probably want a little bit more than that. I'd say around four point two, four point. Yeah, Anywhere between four point two to four point seven, there's anything he'll want. And I, to be honest, I'd rather have Braun go to um, a contender because he's one of the guys that he's never won a cup, and he's you know I, I, I think he's I think he's good, and I also think he's one of the veteran guys that's like a lot of a lot of like teams will look up to. And I think he, I, I feel like he's a good locker room piece. If the Flyers again, and this is just if the Flyers were to get rid get rid of them, I personally don't think they should. Um, but if Cap comes down to that, um, I if Braun goes, either I'd say probably Freeman takes his spot, um, and then they do some tinkering with the lines from there. But uh, you know. I, I I like Braun. I hope they'd re-sign him. And as for Pitlick, I mean, I love him. The thing is with Pitlick is that he does everything right. <laughs> and he does, literally, he'll do, at, he does everything that you ask him to. I mean, like, he, 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 it's not like he's just one of them bottom six guys that, you know, has some skill but can't really do much. Like, he has skill, and it's there. And, 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 and we've seen it a few times. Like, he scores some pretty nice goals. Same thing with, with NAK. And, uh, uh, and then, okay, he's got seven goals, and some of them have been pretty nice. That one against Columbus, he had. He got some luck versus Carolina. He's, he's had a couple nice ones, um, and you know, and I've talked about this before, like the bottom six stuff, like that. I, I love the bottom six. I love every player on the bottom six, and I think that's been one of the big strong suits uh, uh, from the team this season as well. Huge difference from last year. Huge difference yeah. from last. Well, the previous year, right? <clears throat> and and just to to point out about Pitlick, the expectation. One, he was getting underpaid because he got injured. He right. was never worth a million dollars. That's why we traded for him, because we yeah. couldn't have signed Pitlick for a million dollars. He wasn't even playing a fourth-line role. He was actually playing a third-line role for Dallas. That's why Bill Meltzer had him pegged to be a third-line player here, because he actually played a huge role for Dallas prior to coming here, because he always did the right thing. And he actually reminds you a lot of a guy named Michael Roffel, who has yeah. a very similar skill set, yeah. and a guy we've all grown to love and maybe is a little underappreciated at this point who at one point put up 20 goals playing, again, in a fill-in role, but we need those guys. Um, and I think Pitlick would be an awesome re-signing. I do think he will definitely get a raise, without a doubt, maybe double what he's making right now, um, close to whatever Hartman got in his contract. Um, I believe he got 2.5. Right, so I would imagine Pitlick gets two, so something mm -hmm. like that, because he's a little yeah, older. Yeah, I had him either getting from one to two, and right now he gets one, so. Okay, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> With him only being 27 years old, I, I, I just think that this guy has played a $2.5 million contract Depends this on year. term. He plays, in, he plays top six minutes at times like he could fill in. So to me, like a guy that could fill in top six minutes, you get that extra $500,000 there, in my opinion, for you not just a third and fourth line role. But it, the, the, the neat thing, the guy, like you guys said, he he does everything. He does everything well. He kills he kills big penalties. He saves goals. I mean, he <laughs> he, he saved the goal. You know, helped out Carter Hart there. You know, uh, in saving goals. But I, I just, uh, it's either going to be him or Grant, in my opinion. And I just think right. that the Flyers Grant's are, a center. Right, and I just think that the, he's also cheaper know, too. Yes, the, it'll be cheaper, and he's a center. But the cool thing about Grant, he's versatile. He can play wing, too. So th that's the thing about it. So if you have Patrick come back, he could possibly slide into the fourth line center role there. But mm -hmm. he could play a wing, too. You know, but I'd, I'd rather him play third line winger with Patrick than fourth line center. I'd rather have Bunneman play fourth line or, or fourth, fourth line center or whoever else you want to throw. I don't know if Bunneman will be on this team next year. I don't know if he'll be able to make the team. Maybe the, with Raffle and the reason that people think, you know, about Raffle being it, it, one of the reasons why he's underappreciated. People compare him to that 20 goal season. So from there, once you once you start at the 20 goal season, OK, this guy put up 20 to 22 goals. I think it was 22, if I'm not mistaken. But, oh it, you know, God. he started high. So people are like, oh, OK, he's That's the same thing with Ghost. Well, he was yeah. in his prime. He was he in his prime. 13. He only potted 12 here. I don't understand. He used to be a 22 goal. You know, so people think that he's declining when he's actually, you know, midlining. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, 
you mentioned ghost. I'm gonna change the topic real quick here, and I, I'm gonna I, I I need to bring something up because we just talked about Justin Braun. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something a little controversial that I I think people will think is a pretty stupid statement, but I think there's a good chance I'm gonna end up being right. There's a good chance we let Justin Braun go and we keep Shane Goss's bear. And I think people forget about Ghost, but I would much rather have Shane Goss better than Justin Braun. So and they, cost, they cost the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. So I think it's I a mean, no-brainer. I really like yeah. Justin Braun. They both cost the same amount for sure. If <laughs> you if you trade Ghost, then you keep Braun. That's that's what happens, in my opinion. And, and to be honest, there's probably no way they trade Ghost. And if there's any way they trade Ghost, they, they should do it now. Jamie, we talked about this. If they were to yeah, trade Ghost now and, like, w- one of the high-end prospects, maybe, like, a Bobby Brink or something like that, and, I and Jamie, you even said it, not to not get rid of Ratcliffe. Um, but, I mean, if they were to trade Ghost, a first like, this year's first-round pick, and uh, I completely blanked. What did I? Oh, uh, a prospect, yeah. Prospect, yeah, something like that. Um, they would probably move from five, f- between five and ten in the draft, depending on when the draft is. Okay. So we talked about this too, and I, I okay. I'm sorry, to, I cut you off, but let me, let me let me throw out some different logic to you, and this logic comes from today. So initially, initially the idea was, yeah, let's move up in the draft, okay? But that's a normal, a normal NHL season. Mm-hmm. This is definitely not a normal NHL season, right? Obviously. <laughs> By no stretch, right? So we can assume scouting players will be disrupted, right? We lost a lot of games, lost a lot of coverage. That means assumptions that are usually made in that end of the year time where we watch go- guys go from 5 to 20, that's gone now. So there's a humongous crapshoot of information that is incomplete that they weren't expecting players that they didn't get to cover because they had it scheduled later in the year, little things like that. People are going to get caught with their pants down. There's opportunities now in this draft. The players are going to unexpectedly fall because teams maybe didn't get the time to observe them. They don't get any of the tournaments. They don't get any of the playoffs. All that is gone. Yeah. Cause the only thing was the world juniors. That but was the only have, thing they could really they only have older coverage, nothing yeah. newer. And, and right, say, oh, let right. me finish. Within two, three months, development for a 16, 17, 18 year old kid is humongous. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like an adult. Like, literally, four months can be huge in development. So, the draft, maybe not worth even investing moving up. Maybe worth getting more picks and mm-hmm. just maybe something because awesome. Like- is it me or sorry, sorry to cut you off, but like, is it me or is it like late round draft picks are better than like first round draft picks, like better second, third round? Better bang for your buck. Like, yeah, Tyler Pitlick is a second round pick taken in the first round. Yeah, right. But you always this 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 draft is so loaded that you're going to you were already going to have players to filter into the second round, you right. know, much like the brink, you know, exactly. much like prior seasons and stuff like that. This draft, I'm serious that you could see some first round talent fall into the third round. Even that's that's how loaded this Oscar draft is. Lindblom. I was Oscar. so happy. I was Did you so imagine happy Lafreniere? that Chuck that that Chuck <laughs> Fletcher held on to all you know the majority of his picks for that very reason. And yeah. this year, I'm I'm going to be honest. This year is the best year for the Flyers to move up because of how well the farm system is stocked. But you are right, Eureka. And that is something that I never even took into account was the CHL, you know, the playoffs and, you know, mm-hmm. all these, you know, different tournaments, you know, conference tournaments, yeah. you know, you know, NCAA, you know, all all these things that are going on, you know. And yeah, a lot of so, phone interviews, a lot of phone and video interviews. With these well, that's kids. the thing, because they were saying that they might they might actually do the draft like as a conference call. That, that, they have no choice. That's exactly that's, what's going to happen. That's, that's, that's going to happen. happen virtually uh, and it, it'll probably get televised to an event you think there's any way that they'll before. that they'll do the uh the draft lottery like that too have they canceled that yet because that's supposed to be april 9th they're gonna do everything remotely they're gonna do like what we're doing now they're gonna be doing that i yeah. know because i work in corporate america that is absolutely well, what they're I'll, gonna t- do. I'll tell you this when you hear Pierre lebron darren drager and bob mckenzie last week saying that more than likely a virtual draft is going to happen put that to the bank more than likely yeah going to happen well, they're not listen guys in in the modern era it's completely feasible for them i i this is my prediction okay every single business 
looks to save money, right? There's an opportunity here for all of these businesses to save money. They are being forced into ideas that I would have if I ran the NHL that maybe Chris would have because he's a lot younger than they are and he lives in a different mindset than they do. They live in a very much in-person mindset, right? Where I'm like kind of in the middle. Chris is very used to a virtual age. Our audience now is being forced virtual. So it's not going to be permanent. I don't think it's going like we're still going to be going to stadiums and stuff, but they're going to learn a lot over the past few months how to broadcast this way, how to do stuff from separate. And they will notice they save a ton of money. And when they realize that, that how much money they save, they're going to alter the way they do things. It doesn't mean they're going to get rid of things as we know it because they're all traditionalists. So that's not going to happen. But they will alter things to save money. And I think we have no choice in the short term. And in the long term, Jamie, I think you've even said this, that things will change in the long term. Minor stuff, but it'll change. Oh, yeah. But some of these some of these are changes are going to become permanent. Like, I do not foresee media in the locker rooms for an extended period of time. I foresee, I know, you know, even if, NHL, even if the NHL reconvened, I think it's only going to be, you know, the main beats, like, you know, who cover the Flyers, main beats, like, NBC, you know, like David Isaac and Sam Carcidi, <clears throat> they might just cut it off there, you know, or, or, or you know, could be, video, the, could be video calls with players in the beginning as well. Video well, that's call. the thing. That's what they've been doing. It's been like they've yeah. been going a couple guys from each division and been doing them now, too. Yeah, and, I mean, you know, that's the unfortunate, you know, what's what's happening now. Well, I, I just think that. Uh, it's going to take a lot. So, like, even if the NHL reconvened, it's to me, it's no spectators. Yeah. And Look, the, it just keeps getting pushed back. So, the president talked about April 12th, Easter weekend, and now it's been pushed back to April 30th, he said today. And I know it's the president. I, I get it. I understand it. But, you know, I still respect the guy because he's the president of the United States, regardless right. of how people feel. You know what I mean? So, like, when he says, like, Easter weekend, even though it may not seem rational, it's still Easter weekend was his status update. It was, it was absolutely rational. It was. I mean, I don't want to get political, but no. it was. It was what he discussed with his doctors. It's what they thought their early projection date could be. That's what you do in right. business. You pick a milestone date. You move so towards it. Now it's been pushed back to April thirtieth. So yes. now, what's going to happen in two weeks? Are they going to push it back to say mid May? And where I'm getting at is like, yes, they the will. The longer that they keep delaying that. Because they're not just going to start everything and say, I'm NHL aside, you know, I'm saying businesses now. Mm-hmm. They're not just going to say, okay, well, cool, everybody's open. Let's go. It's back to normal. Mm-hmm. It'll be a trickle cool back. Too. It'll be a trickle yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's where I'm getting at. So with the, just the ways, the seasons of the NBA, the NHL, so it's like, uh, are they going to come back? Because the later that that date keeps going, Yurif, you work in this all the time. You work in corporate America. You see this, and you see target dates. So the moment that you see that target date keep being moved and moved, I, I will say, I will say this: there's a lot of doom and gloom. I, I'll tell you this, man: humans are amazing problem solvers, way better than people anticipate. And a lot of these, like news reports, these news agencies, they're not problem solvers. Sorry, I know we're working in media. We're not. I mean, we kind of try to solve the problem, but most of them are not problem solvers. They just yell and scream on television. That's great. Give information, select a few of them. They're not part of the process. They can do whatever they want, but if you've ever solved problems, which I have on a larger scale, these systematic problems, technical problems, everything always seems like it's chaos at first. You work your way through it. If you listen to the doctors, that's how we're going, and that's how we're going to work our way through the, the NHL problem. But I do want to switch gears. Let's switch gears. Let's not be all negative. We have more to talk about. We have two players that we still want to sign. Right? I think, I think I, Jamie, you definitely have something to say about both of these guys. <laughs> um, so I'll let you open up, and then we'll go to Chris. But we have Linus Hogberg, and we have Bernhard, David Bernhard. Right? We have two guys, Swedish boys. Um, they've been in the system for a while, drafted both late uh, picks. Um, both have had some pretty good success over there. Um, really young as well, right in that same age group. Guys that we all were worried, are they going to get signed, right? They, we believe they can uh, attribute to our Phantoms team today. The Phantoms D was a little bit light, right? We have James DeHaas playing. Um, we have Reese Wilcox. These guys are decent, but they're probably not don't have an NHL future. Yeah. 
where, you know, yeah. Hochberg and Bernhardt, they might. They might actually. We don't know. Um, but, you know, there are some people – I know Alexander Appleyard is very high on Hogberg, um, and I trust his opinion. I've been talking to him for years, and he knows his stuff. So I, I, I've i seen Hogberg. I like what I've seen from him. And could he be another Mark Friedman guy? I don't know. But what, what do you think about them, Jamie? What do you think about – do we have a chance to bring these guys in-house? Uh, if you're asking me now after Chuck Fletcher's conference call, more than likely probably not. And, uh, you know, that's just uh, – you know, where it seems to be, uh, Chuck Fletcher has his eye on the uh, contractual limit, which he should. Uh, he said, you know, they're, they're right near against the limit, and they are with 49 contracts at the at the moment. And, of course, you know, things change at the end of season, and, you know, that number, that number will go down to around 42 to 43, but he must already have a plan. And the plan, I think, is why I call Nick, and I think that that's, that is that is the key right there. If Wyatt Colnick goes back to the University of Wisconsin, then it is probable that Linus Hogberg could get an ELC because uh, it, it, that, that, I think they're holding out. They have until June 1st to do such. Now, what I would do if I'm Chuck Fletcher, in which I'm sure he's already thinking of, because he was only given the ELC question today, they could ATO them. And I think, you know, given the uncertainty to the economy and everything right now, that now is the bet now would be the better time to accept an ATO saying, OK, I'll earn it because, you know what, David Bernhardt would be a very good AHLer. Would he be good in the NHL? I'm not sh I'm not so sure. But what he can do is become a veteran glue piece, like more or less like TJ Brennan was, you know, for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms for years. And you're going to need when you all have. The way Chuck Fletcher and Ron Hextall has done this farm system, you're going to continuously have these young prospects filtering in and out, filtering in and out, in and out, in and out. You're still going to need your veteran guys. And David Bernhardt, you know, is that. And so is Linus Hogberg. There is no reason in the world why Chuck Fletcher should let these two walk for, you know, to free agency, which could very well happen. And Linus, like you said, Alex Appleyard is very high on Linus Holberg, and he is a very good offensively talented defenseman. Let's be honest, he is playing in the third, arguably the third toughest league in the world, you know, in the SHL. You know, sure. I'm, I'm sorry, but he has earned a contract, in my opinion, and when he, he compares him to Wyatt Wiley. That's who I was talking with Alex earlier on direct message sure. and stuff. He said he is very comparable to Wyatt Wiley, and, you know, you know, he's a little more seasoned than Wiley, you know, at this particular time, you know, but um, I, 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 I personally, the two most unpredictable positions in hockey is defense and goaltending. I would not let any walk until you absolutely couldn't accept any more. And if David Drake can earn an ATO, there's no reason in the world why these two gentlemen who are arguably better, in my opinion, oh, than easily. David Drake. No offense, David well, I, Drake. I, he shouldn't be getting at least an ATO. Uh, I don't know. But it is what it is. You know, I, I trust Chuck Fletcher. That's where I'll leave. Well, you know. Yeah, I think so. you make great points there. Chris, Chris, what do you think? Do you think, think any chance there? Or do you think Jamie's probably on? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it, it, to me, it's hard to say. I mean, because there's so much that goes into it. Um, I mean, I personally, I think Jamie's on. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if 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 Colnick definitely goes back to college and he plays another season, I'd say yeah, you give one of them a shot. But the one thing I will change with that though, I would I would try it with Bernhardt and see what happens instead of Hogberg because my only thing is that like Hogberg might want to go back. <laughs> Hogberg might want to play overseas. That's my only thing. I just hope they don't walk overseas. Um, but if they walk to, uh, you know, obviously another uh, NHL team. But, you know, and, and it's funny because me and Jamie even talked about this, that, like, as of right now, like, it's either <clears throat> you sign with the contract you're given or you don't play. Because that's what the, what the whole coronavirus and everything like that. It's like you're basically forced to do that, to, to sign. So it's like, I mean, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say right now. But I think if, in a perfect world, I'd probably say Bernhardt over Hogbar. Um, but. Again, that's just my opinion, but I, I definitely do think Jamie is on. I don't think, uh, like, I'm not saying Jamie. I'm not saying your opinion's bad, and I'm not saying you know, 
I, I like both prospects, and I think they're both very good players, but I just I would rather have Bernhardt than Hogberg. That's just me, though. You know, it's funny you say that about other teams. There are some teams that are hurt for defense. When you're looking, you could look, you could filter in the Colorado Avalanche even into there. You know, what the well, Leafs for sure. You, you, you know, know you, these guys are getting camp invites. I mean, regardless, like oh, they're, yeah, they're not oh, going yeah. right it's, unplayed. It's what's scary is that they could fall in our division is what's scary about yeah. that. Is that scary or is that just the consequence of having way too much talent in your it, organization? It is, but you know what, man? I'm so – I, I think a it's very both. <laughs> like, like who, <laughs> who would? There, well, so. realistically, yeah. I mean, like, if you guys look at the contracts, who would you drop for Hogberg and Bernhardt? And I'm There's not, and I'm not saying that there aren't maybe a couple arguments. So you're like, oh yeah, I would drop this guy, but nobody's a clear cut. Like, every single contract the Flyers have is valuable right now. Yeah, that yeah. that is what's happening. Yes, in the past. Hogan I agree with her. And Bernhardt yeah. would never be walking. We would be screaming in the streets. I don't, Chris. I don't even know if you remember this age, but we <laughs> had nothing. We had our best. I think uh, what was it Mike Testaweed, if I remember his name. Our I best. I have no clue what you're talking about. Dude, we, our <laughs> best prospect of the time were free agent signings that Paul Holmgren grabbed. That guys who had never had a chance to play in the NHL. We would dance if we had Friedman. We were dancing in the streets. You have no idea. The spoils that the Flyers have today. I think I, I'll be honest with you. I really don't think people recognize how truly deep Ron Hextall made this organization. Oh, it, it, it's the effects of his he, G- GM he built take the time. stepping stones for what we have right now. Yes, Listen, he's, these he's, are the last he's, two six draft picks have signed from 2016. They're like that is insane. Yes, and they're these good. are the last. And they're two good. That, Possibly not average. Signed. They're good. Dude, they're good. Great. That doesn't happen. The like, dude and, and, and the thing is, is so draft could have been the best draft in Flyers history. Eventually. Yeah. First of all, if you doubt Ron Hextall, you just say this to yourself. Carter Hart is here because of Ron Hextall. Oh yeah, yeah. And just stop I, talking. Yeah. <laughs> because there have been countless GMs. Yep. That have tried and have failed. And he didn't just bring in Hart, okay? They re-signed the same goalie he brought in, Brian Elliott, who everybody shat on him for re-signing. He's right. still here. They He also kept Alex Lyon, which everybody agrees. I, Chris, I know you're not that high on him. But everybody agrees at least he's a good AHL he goalie. Is. He right? is. Right? Right? He Maybe he has potential to be an NHL that guy. Plus, yeah. Ustamenko, Samsonov, Fedotov, which everybody wanted to throw off to the side, who's a 6'7 goalie who might end up being an NHL Sandstrom. goalie one day. Sandstrom as well. You mm-hmm. can just keep going down the line. We just have so many good young goalies. You know, it, and Ersan, didn't right. even mention him. Yeah, yeah right. You know? and, and it's funny because I, I was actually looking at this the other day. The way that the Flyers got Sandstrom – I don't know if you might remember this, but when they traded Zach Ronaldo to Boston for a third round pick, that yeah, was yeah. Who, that was Sandstrom. Yeah, that was how they got Sandstrom. Yeah, that yeah. comes full circle. Full <laughs> circle. So, yeah. you know, that it always happens. But I do want to talk about Kalanuk real quick. I mean, you guys mentioned him. I know, obviously, I'll, I'll give you both to comment on him because I know we can all kind of get excited about him in a different way. This is yeah. obviously another steal. I, I believe seventh round pick. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an overager, I think he was 19 at the age he was drafted, so I think he was one year passed over. Um, went straight into the NCAA, if I remember correctly, from getting drafted, and never looked back. And I, I remember seeing this kid in dev camp, and I kept going, like, why wasn't he drafted? Like, what's the issue here? And now I look at him at camp, and I go, well, I love Zamula, but I really think that Kalanuk might be better. And Zamula is fantastic, and he's also a little bit younger, so I give him a little bit of time. But Kalanuk, at least offensively, it obviously changes as things evolve and they develop. But right now, I just look at development. I mean, I really like Ronnie Attar. There's a lot of the defensemen I really like, Mason Millman. But I just look at the game overall of what Kalanuk has at this point in his career, and I see why he's being prioritized. Because I think he could come in and be a— Maybe the best defenseman on the Phantoms his first year. Maybe not the best all round, but at least the best offensively. He'll play the power play time. He'll mm-hmm. play with Frost. He'll play with Allison, Lashinsky. He is that guy that maybe could quarterback a power play, jump into what Philip Myers was doing prior, what Sanheim was doing prior to that. This is a guy who has a legit chance to be a top four defenseman, in my opinion. And again, taking a seventh round pick, 
I mean, I think that's really awesome. I don't know if he's going to be like a top pairing guy, but, you know, the guy who could put up points in the NHL while being a puck moving defenseman. Um, I think there's real potential there, you know? I think there's really, really nice potential with Kalanuk. And I think we're going to see a lot of that when inevitably the dev camp starts up again. I think we'll see a very poised player that if he does come to camp, if they do sign him, odds are he's probably going back. Um, he's a guy that people are going to be really excited about and could be, you know, easing the pain if we do lose the young defenseman in the near future. We know Kalanick's coming. We know York. We know Zamula. We have so mm. many good young defensemen. But again, he might be the most NHL ready. Jamie, what do you think about him? Oh, uh, Kalanick is, uh, he's going to be a phenomenal NHL player. And I'll tell you that straight up. I mean, uh, again, kudos to Ron Hextall, uh, a late round draft pick, a hidden gem. I would call them, you know, anybody just like Tanner Lazinski, sixth round hidden gem, uh, Kalanick, uh, seventh round hidden gem, posted uh, 78 points, you know, for his collegiate career thus far. He's a captain of the Wisconsin, you know, uh, you know, Badgers at the moment. And we interviewed him last month, and what he said was some key things. And this is why I don't believe he's going to sign, and I think he's going to go back, is that. He loves being captain of the Badgers, and he he told me that he did not want to leave the University of Wisconsin in disarray, and the NHL would be here in one year, two years, and three years down the line. So to me, that showed that tells me that this guy is in no rush, you know, to sign an uh, you know an NHL contract. He knows sure. that he will get one eventually because you know what he knows he's that damn good, you know, and that damn talented that. If the Flyers didn't offer him one, he'd know that another team would come a call and, you know, and, and to sign him. So I think he's not in any rush, you know, by any means. But there was another thing that he told me that I was very interested in. And you touched a little bit on it. He loves being on the power play. You know, and if the Flyers could offer him power play time, he would sign like today. And, and, and I know, you know, he could play that, you know, with the Phantoms and whatnot, but that seems to be a big thing for him is power play. He loves to be on that power play because it adds, you know, what does it do? It, and he does it well. I mean, you, the, he, he was inserted as a power play. He had, he had three power play assists in two games, you know, for, for the first time that he was on the power play this past year. So he, he's an impressive puck-moving defenseman. Uh, I think he's a little more talented than Wyatt Wiley. And like you said, I think offensively, be, yeah, yeah, I think he'd be a top pairing defenseman for the you know the Lehigh Valley Phantoms next year. Absolutely, no question. Yeah, I agree. But but the cool thing about we could possibly see a Wyatt Call Nick pairing because Wiley plays both sides, left and right. That would be so, cool. That'd be funny. A Wyatt, uh, uh, what's it called a Wyatt line or whatever. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, think, I know, like that. Chris, let's let's give Chris an opportunity here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I I I like Kalnuk. Um, I think he's a very solid defenseman, a very good offensively. I mean, he's put up uh, 25 or more points in the last three years uh, in college. I mean, he's just unreal um, defensively or offensively. Sorry, um, I I think he's another one of them guys where Jamie, as you said, you put him on the power play. Um, he, he, I, I feel like he, you could maybe throw him on a power play with Samula, maybe see what happens with that. Maybe have both of them work it out with a two, def- two defenseman kind of thing. Um, to be honest, I'd rather have Zamula on the uh, <clears throat> the uh, first unit power play and then Kalnick on the second unit power play. Um, maybe to see how it goes. I don't. Does Kalnick play penalty kill at all or no? He probably will. Most likely, they're gonna think. Just think about. It, they're gonna try to develop him to be two way. Yeah. Right. Especially with Scott Gordon. Scott Gordon likes to yeah. test his prospects. Like, like uh, you know, they did that with uh, Nolan Patrick last year. The last, not this well, past year, in uh, T- Travis Konechny in uh, preseason. They put the them tru- both on. The truth yeah. is, is if Kalanick can't play PK at the AHL level, he won't make the NHL. Right, because the AHL, true, yeah. the AHL level PK yeah. is nowhere near. I mean, it's not 100% true, but they're going to want him to learn how to play. Mm-hmm defensively and, because he's has and, the offensive game and probably not even just learn it just be, be good at it too yes yes yeah. exactly because right. we're, we're tr- thinking like bare minimum but ultimately like this is a guy who might end up being more talented than anybody expected happens all the time right you know what i mean he's a defenseman yeah, so you just gotta get drafted you just have right. to get drafted you know that's the thing about I mean, it just and it's an funny because jamie like you just said that like i just looked up like the draft history and i'm looking through this and i see like, some of these names that went late uh, Wyatt Wiley, Samuel Erson, both fifth-round picks. 
uh, Kalnick, as we're talking about, seventh round pick. Uh, Carson Torinsky, third round pick. Connor Butterman, fourth round pick. Hogberg, fifth round pick. Legzinski, oh. sixth round. Bernhardt, yep. seventh round pick. Yep. Ivan Fedotov, seventh round seventh pick. Round David pick. Kasha, fifth round pick. Keep going, brother. I mean, it's great. Mark Fer- Mark Freeman, uh, third Dude. round pick. Sandheim, first round pick. These guys Crazy. got fired. The guys who drafted these players got fired. <laughs> that just shows you how ridiculous sports is, that you can be nope. amazing at your job and it's, still get fired. We're not drafting another Finnish player this year. We don't have a finish, you know, scout at the particular time. So, you know, that that's out the window right now because what? They don't get this. You, honestly, I'm, I'm being serious about that. I'm not even laughing about that because, uh, you know, they can't see the games right now. So and that's wh- where you would use one of your scouts elsewhere. Well, there's something. an example of something that will probably change. Like maybe they'll be more aware of having a guy in each location that can easily travel just in case of yeah. limiting travel or any of that type of stuff. You might see extra scouts being hired. I, we don't know because they all have a budget, right? This is a staff budget. It goes kind of beyond that. You know, It gets complicated down the line. But listen, we, we just talked about how many players there is. One, two, three, four, five. Five young players that are all about, what, 21 years old? So they're not children, children, right? So they're like becoming men. They were drafted by the Flyers. And all five of them potentially have an NHL future. Three of them clear cut, as we we all agree that Kalnuk, Lashinsky, and Allison are definite NHL players. We think Hogberg and Bernhard are potential. Definitely Hogberg being a potential and Bernhard, at least an AHL guy at the very least. That's a hell of a draft. Um, you know, and again, those are late picks, like you said. It, it, a lot of them. I mean, Allison obviously was a high end second round pick. We should mm-hmm. expect a lot from him. Um, right. But again, a lot to be excited about, right? And we we got a couple minutes left here. I, I want us to sign off, um, but I think that I just want us to walk away and just before we give our sign offs, there's a lot to be positive about going into next year. Even though we might have lost the season, there's a lot of awesome stuff to build. And even if we lose time, there's silver lining for the Flyers because you know we we benefit in a lot of ways from patience. Um, at least our team does. So I think there's a lot to look forward to, Jamie. Why don't you give a sign off and then pass it off to Chris? And we'll end this uh, bitch. Listen, I, you know what? I, I'm sitting here laughing and I'm laughing for a reason because the damn Flyers would be in first place right now. We'd be <laughs> a 10 game winning streak right now. And if we would have beaten Boston, we would have been on a 19 game winning streak. I don't want to hear it from anybody. Nobody. Nobody first could tell me. never anything. felt so good, so Jamie. Flyers, Flyers live videos keep going and stuff. Like, they'd be in first place right now. And if the season did reconvene and they had four, five regular they season They probably games, would have been. They'd yeah. win them freaking all. They would win them all. I don't give a damn. This Noel team, Patrick would have come back. No yes. games. You know what that means? The team wins every one. <laughs> it, all <laughs> exactly night, what that means. And yes. hugs, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you that this team is being built for the long haul. That's where I'm getting. This oh, yeah. is a short-term build here. Where we're just going to contend this year, and that was it. The damn coronavirus stood in our way. You know what? The Flyers are going to throw some lines at it and just take it down. And then next year they're going to come back and contend. The following year they're going to come back and contend. They could really be in contention for the next ten years. I'm, I'm, all, I'm not even laughing. And and, the, and honestly, series. we don't like, know who we're even going to draft in the first round pick. That guy could end up being amazing. Most people don't. Oh, prospects here. Well, most people don't know about a player named John Beecher who was taken late in the first round pick. That guy's probably going to be a really good player at the NHL level. And Boston, of course, drafted. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Chris, yeah. you can go ahead. Chris, sign off, please, buddy. End, us, end our show here. Tell people where to follow you. Uh, so um, I'm on a bunch of different sites here. Um, there's kind of a lot. My main thing is my YouTube, which is uh, at FlyersFamania93. I post a bunch of videos on there. Um, my Twitter is at FlyersFamania. Uh, Instagram is FlyersFamania93. Uh, it's kind of annoying with that because Twitter only lets you put 15 letters in the name, and I can't add 93 at the end of it. Um, I, I'm, you know, I, I post a lot of stuff. I try to do as many things as possible, and, and you know, this stuff like uh, stuff like this with you guys, I appreciate it, and thank you again for coming on. But there's one thing else I wanted to say. Um, this team is going to win the Stanley Cup in the next three seasons. Oh, I love that. I'm saying yes. it right now. In the next yes. three seasons, uh, we will dude, be so Stanley Cup we... champions. That's and it. The that's, next time, that's not even, the next that's not even a big prediction. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have a Flyers nitty flag out there. Okay? Oh, yeah, We're gonna gonna have a dog, we need to beard. do a podcast live from the parade. Bring us some gin. Tank Ray. 
Tank Ray for right. everybody. Don't you heard darn. it here first. When, not if, when they win the Stanley Cup, we will be live podcasting during the bridge. You got it. Decided here during the pandemic <laughs> when it's real. When crazy Con- shit happens. Yeah. The pandemic. <laughs> All right. Thanks for following. Thanks for listening, guys. We love you. We'll be back. Follow Jamie. Follow myself. Follow Chris. Chris is part of our team, so you're going to see a lot more of them. Enjoy. And we love you guys. Talk to you soon. Love you all.